G'day. Uh, an interesting thing has happened since I've started doing these YouTube videos. Um, I've gone from having 350 friends who were family and friends uh, on Facebook and um, I've now got an equivalent number, another 350 who are uh, friends or followers on YouTube and Facebook um, primarily because of these videos. Um, so I'm going to try and get one of these um, videos uh, out as frequently as I can, one a day or you know one every other day. Um, I wanted to uh, talk today about the way, which is what the, the Christians were called uh, in the early days. And starting at uh, Matthew chapter 7 at uh, verse 13, Christ is talking about the narrow way where he says, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it, which is the destructive way. Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are a few uh, who find it. Now, we know from other scriptures that um, it's not unusual as a Christian to feel like a, an alien and a pilgrim in a foreign land, because this land is not our home. Um, as Christians, we try each day to become more like Christ, and in doing so, we become less and less each day uh, acclimatised to where we are. So it's, if you're feeling like I am, that, um, um, that you're really not part of this world, um, then you're not alone. Most Christians are feeling that way. Um, we find in uh, Amos um, chapter 8, at verse 11, um, the um, parable of the, um, the summer fruits, and, and the, the whole of Amos 8 is worth reading if you're into eschatology. But at uh, verse 11 it tells us, Behold the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Um, that's not talking about right now, but once the, um, once the church is removed at the rapture, um, it will be extremely difficult to find anyone that has any knowledge of the scriptures. But that's not to say that uh, God's going to leave himself without a witness. He told... Um, uh, Elijah, I think it was, um, that he still had 7,000 that Elijah didn't know about. So there will be, um, cross, sorry, you know, cross, God will be reaching out to people during the tribulation. And uh, we know, I think it's um, Revelation 15 tells us that there was a number of um, tribulation saints that nobody could number uh, in heaven. Uh, you've got to get to heaven, that's the thing. Uh, continuing on, the parable of the fig tree tells us the timing of, of where we are. The, the fig tree is a, an, a metaphor for, um, for Israel. Um, and in Matthew, sorry, in yeah, Matthew 24:32, um, Christ is talking about uh, events at the time of the end. He says, "Now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and put forth leaves, you know that summer is near." Um, in 1947, um, the United Nations said to the, the, uh, the Jews, they said, you can have your land back. Uh, and they've still got it and they'll never lose it. So the fig tree, which is Israel, in 1947 began to put forth its leaves and the branches became tender. Uh, so you also, when you see these things, know that it is near even at your doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Just notice here that it says this generation, a generation of 70 years, and this began happening in 1947, 70 years ago. So this is very close. Uh, continuing along. Uh, so this is... Ephesians, I've missed something. Oh, hang on, I'll go back and get it for you. Okay, the days of Noah. This is that famous no one knows the day of the hour passage that I did a video on yesterday. If you want to have a look for that, it's uh, called uh, The Doctrine of Imminence is Not True. <laughs> anyway, continuing on uh, in 37, but as the days of Noah were, also, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days of Noah before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark. 
uh, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so will also the, the coming of the Son of Man be. So the um, passages where it talks about Christ coming as a thief in the night will catch some people unawares. They'll just can be continuing on in their normal lives and won't be able to see any reason to believe that... Uh, that God could have anything good for them in store. They'll just be focusing on what they want. Number one on a list of one is themselves. Number one on a list of one is where God is in our lives. Anyway, continuing on. So here we are in Ephesians 2, 8, 9 and 10. Um, whenever you read 2, 8 and 9, always make sure you pick up 10 as well. This is talking about grace. This is God's hand reaching out to each one of us, saying, uh, I only want the best for you, and all you've got to do is believe in my Son. So, for by grace you've been saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. There's nothing that we can add to the finished work of Christ at the cross. The grace of God is through faith. So, um, Romans 10.9 tells us that we need to confess with our mouth uh, and believe in our heart that Christ is the Son of God. 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4 also puts it in another way, but it's the same thing. It's an outward expression of an inward belief uh, that makes us right with God. But then reading on for, uh, from uh, verse 10 on, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So this is talking about our growth. Once we've made the commitment and believed in our hearts um, that Christ is the Messiah and that he is the one who has redeemed us from um, our destiny, which was hell, and uh, saved us from that, uh, God then expects us to, to grow. And that's what this, work, when she, uh, this, uh, this works part here is. So it's not a contradiction. It's a... Um, um, Oh, it's something um, to, to um, you know, build the body. Bodybuilding, there you go. Uh, continuing on. Revelation 3, verse 3. Just wanted to point out, it says here, Remember therefore how you have received and heard. Hold fast and repent. Repent just means turn to God instead of doing uh, navel-gazing. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief, and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. I just wanted to take out the knots here and, and read it to you again. Uh, therefore, if you will watch, you will know the hour I will come upon you. So some people, Christ will come upon as a thief, but not if you're watching, and that's what we're doing. Uh, here we are in Isaiah 26, verse 19. This is another section that talks about the time that's just shortly ahead of us. Uh, Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 15, 50 to the end, and in uh, 1 Thessalonians 4 uh, and 5 and 2 Thessalonians 2 about the rapture. Um, and this is what this is talking about. Your dead shall live together with my body, they shall arise. Awake and sing you who dwell in the dust. Uh, for, the dew, for your dew is like the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out its dead. So the dead in Christ shall rise um, the trumpet, at the trumpet blast, and we shall all be changed. Then it says, Come, my people, enter into your chambers and shut the doors behind you. Hide yourself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation is past. For behold, the Lord comes out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their sins. Uh, the earth also will also disclose her blood and there will be no and will no more cover her slain that's uh, Isaiah 26 19 to the end um, okay just wanted to point out um, that the um, what's the date here this is um, today so let's make that the 23rd on the 23rd of September which is only you know um, 11 or 12 days away, um, there'll be an alignment which accurately is accurately depicted that's described by the Apostle John in Revelation 12. If you haven't seen this, do some research into Revelation 12. 
Um, there's nine stars traditionally in Leo. Uh, three additional stars, however, which are the Aster Planetes, the, um, the wandering stars, form a crown above the head of Virgo. Virgo is clothed with the sun, moon under her feet, and she's just recently given birth to Jupiter, and Jupiter has just been in this box section here for nine months. Uh, that relates to Revelation chapter 12, 1 and 2. Now, that uh, is occurring on a feast day, which is the Feast of Trumpets. And we know from um, the first advent of Christ that he fulfilled um, Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits, and Shavuot, which is Pentecost. Uh, they are the, uh, the four feasts that have been fulfilled. There's still three to go, which is Yom Teruah, which is um, the Feast of Trumpets, plus um, Tabernacles and the Day of Atonement, which is Yom Kippur. Um, anyway, continuing on. So here we are in Mark 13, 13. Um, and um, this is Christ uh, talking about the tribulation time. There's a warning here that um, if you find yourself in the tribulation that you need to endure to the end because this is Christ um, at the Olivet Discourse saying and you will be hated by all for my name's sake. So during the tribulation it will not be a good thing to be uh, a Christian outwardly because they'll put you to death for it. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. So what's going to happen during the tribulation to... Um, to believers is uh, around about the midpoint, about the three and a half years, they'll be rounding up Christians and killing them. Um, and what they don't realise is that um, at the end of the seven years of the tribulation, all those people who have survived that have bent the knee to um, the world system and, and uh, persecuted Christians and taken the mark of the beast all those people will be taken before the, uh, the Lord in the sheep and goat judgment and those who um, survive the tribulation but have denied Christ will, be, will lose their life at the end of the tribulation and be sent straight to hell. So there will be Christians uh, left at the end of the tribulation and they will go on and live for an additional thousand years during the millennial, millennial reign. So continuing on... This, uh, we're now in Matthew 26, 41. This is um, Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane when he was praying the night before he was taken. Uh, and he found Peter and the apostles asleep. Uh, which, you know, that's... Uh, then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to them, Peter, I said to Peter, What? You could not watch with me for an hour? Watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The Spirit is indeed willing... But the flesh is weak. Now, if you're a Christian and this is you're just waking up to this, it's time to let the Holy Spirit light your fire, buddy uh, and man. Um, we live in, in exciting times. We're about to go home. And um, Christ is, is waking the lads up here, the, the, uh, the apostles, and said, couldn't you watch with me for one hour? Well, we've got 10 or 12 days left before uh, all those things come to pass, I believe. And, um, yeah, it's time to start um, uh, getting into your Christian faith where the rubber meets the road. Study your Bible, share your faith. Anyway, my name's Greg. Thanks for, uh, for listening, and um, I'll see you at the next one.